It's 9.23. It's a Tuesday for Monday. Don't listen to me. It's a Monday. Not redoing this. And um, after I walk you through the account, I'm going to talk about a couple of option strategies that you can use to supplement your income on Robinhood. Now, I don't use these strategies, but you could. They're not bad. Every option strategy is good if used at the right time. I just personally don't use them, but uh, I might one day. These two particular option strategies are used whenever um, you think, remember your opinion on anybody else's, you think that volatility in the market is understated, meaning that people don't think there's going to be a lot of volatility in the market. You can make money through these two option strategies, all right? They're very similar. And if you know options already, you probably know which two I'm talking about because I said they're very similar. <laughs> so we'll see if you guessed. Uh, put your guesses down below. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. So <clears throat> I'm going to go in the browser. And um, I'm sitting at a very close to an all-time high right now, which I'm pretty pleased about. Uh, my other account as, as well, I have, you know, I have a precious metals account. It went up bonkers today. And I'm really happy about that. It was a really, really nice day for me today. I'm so, so happy about it. Um, this account was up about, you know, $633, which is all good. Now, looking through it real quick, uh, the biggest gainer, of course, is Apple. Um, if we go under it, you'll see that it went up almost a percent here. 9.99 of a percent, including the after hours. Um, movement here and the options on the day today's return ninety four dollars I decreased liability by ninety four dollars which is good so just four hundred of the dollars pretty much more or less were from Apple now other good things happened of course C-SPAN up eight dollars EXK fifty six dollars now this is a huge gain because <clears throat> it's like 11.24% in one day. It's huge. Now, in my opinion, you know, I, I follow, if you follow me, and you know that I'm a big um, EXK buff. And at this silver price, honestly, this stock should be at like 350. I mean, it's still really way undervalued. I was just talking to a friend today, and, and literally, like, every single problem that EXK has can be solved with higher silver prices. And higher silver prices are here, so their problems are theoretically all solved. <clears throat> Period. This stock should be way higher, but it's being outpaced by the other companies. This tells me two things. One, um, this company actually is garbage, and it's reflecting in its very uh, slow price appreciation relative to other silver miners. Or two, it's severely underpriced by the market. Hopefully it's two. I don't know. Um, well, I mean, I have a guess. I think it's two. Otherwise, I'd probably sell the company right away. But could be wrong. Um, I'm about 60-40 on it. So that's a good gamble. Now, <clears throat> going back to the account here. UXK is, is doing pretty well. Uh, C-SPAN is continuing to run up. It's at 1136 right now. If you remember, I usually call sell calls at ten dollars and sell puts at ten dollars. As you can see, my average cost right here is ten dollars for these two hundred shares. Now, I've had a really nice run. Look, appreciation two hundred seventy-two dollars so far, which is terrific. Plus the um, <clears throat> well, minus fourteen dollars here, but it's going to be twenty-two dollars of premium that I'm going to be collecting temporarily. It's a little bit off, obviously, because the price been uh, on a tear. But this is uh, I'm going to be collecting twenty dollars from here. So now, or actually eighteen. I'm bad at math. Anyway, so C-SPAN's been doing great. What else in the account worth noting? Um, I think the uranium, or well, wheat and precious metals, up twenty-three dollars. Fine. Uranium stocks have been uh, slowly and quietly gaining value. So, energy fuels, 4.55%, $63 here. And then, um, I think your energy is pretty flat. Chemical, though, on the other hand, 
$163.62 gain today, 1.93%. Um, the liability is about flat, but that's fine. Total return so far from the options is $61. Pretty happy about the way that Cameco is going as well. I don't want to make this about Cameco though. It's midnight, so the chart just turned. That's why it seems all black and blank over here. Now, <clears throat> the option strategies, right? So, all right, the option strategies. Well, they're going to be the strangle and the straddle. So let me show you how to put them on and you can have fun with them. Um, one thing I do like about them is they're kind of simple. It's kind of like uh, it's it acts in a reverse of an iron condor if you want to go back and watch the video on the iron condor. And um, they're kind of simple to put on. And not only are they simple to put on, but it ha they have a defined cost, which is very good for people who are not that into mathematics like me and they're not too math savvy right i i gotta think about an option for quite a long time before i figure out all my risks and benefits and all that so this one this one has uh kind of a defined risk but you still have to make sure you measure your volatility and you got to make sure that you're um um you know where you stand relative to the uh, um expected you know historically right what the volatility looks like for the stock that you're trying to uh, buy the strangle or straddle for and where it's sitting at right now make sure that you're in a good spot all right so going into here let's do it for apple all right now apple we're going to go on the options tab you're going to pick your date over here this is obviously on the browser you can do this on the phone as well it's probably it's actually much easier to do it on the phone even but uh, you're going to hit uh, choose your expiration date so how about we do, we don't want to pay, let's see, all right, all right, October 4th, okay. <clears throat> no, it's too close. How about November 1st? I like it, the first. <laughs> so first we're going to do a strangle, not a straddle. Strangle means that you're going to be purchasing a call, an out-of-the-money call, meaning above the price all right so let's say that 225 so by November 1st right if the stock goes above $225 if I buy this call though I will be profiting um, well actually more than that the break-even price is 230 but my my call option will return some some money, right? Um, but in really to be profiting, I would have to be over two hundred thirty and ten cents. Now, I'm not only going to do that. All right, I'm not only going to do that. I'm also going to buy a put that's below. All right, the current price. At the same date, November first. So how about the two hundred and ten? All right, and you'll notice here up at the top, it even says strangle. It recognized what I'm trying to do because Robin Hood's smart. All right, it recognized what I'm trying to do, so it's even saying the name right here. So I've put on a strangle already, and you can see my cost here it's $965 or $9.65 per um, share out of the 100 share contract. Okay, every contract, as you may know, um, is 100 shares. So it will cost you $965 to put this trade on. So let's review. I've bought a put that's below the money. The money meaning the, the price it's at right now, um, which is $219.90. That's kind of too far away. Let's do 215 How about that? All right, that's better. So... <clears throat> 215 I bought a put now my cost increased because it's closer to the strike price right I have a higher chance of being profitable um, with this option I will start being profitable uh, if the price goes price goes below 208 and 80 so I will need the price to be either right below 
208.80 or above the uh, 2.30 mark if I'm going to make any profit on either one of those options. If I click continue here, you'll notice that, oh, whoops, I pressed 2 instead of 1. You notice the cost is 1130 I can set if I want to, um, I can set a limit price. I can also set, well, actually, I don't think, I don't know if I can. Uh, you can set um, the duration you want to, if you want it to expire at the end of the day. If it doesn't fill or it never expires, and just wait until it eventually fills. Um, what that means is if you don't know, waiting for the order to fill means that someone needs to be on the other side of that trade. So once you put the trade on, it's kind of like offering, let me, hold on one sec. It's kind of like uh, offering your good or service out in the market and waiting somebody to to take the other side of your trade. Like let's say you're uh, selling lemonade. It's like saying, lemonade for sale. Anyone who wants lemonade, come to me, right? And someone has to come along and say, oh, I'd like a lemonade, here's my dollar, right? So that exchange needs to happen in the option world as well. So there, there needs to be a real human being or some kind of algorithm or whatever, <laughs> someone with real money, anyway with dollars all right on the other side of the uh, uh, of the trade for it to happen so anyways that's what that means and then I would review the order and place it now I only have eight cents available because I've <laughs> I'm waiting for an order actually in tomorrow morning to fill um, which is I'm buying by the way if you're curious I'm buying GSY which is the short-term treasuries I want to park uh, some money there some dollars there in case I need them later. I'm starting to kind of like cash out now that I'm, my account is a little high. So I need some dry powder for when um, the markets dip a little bit so I can start purchasing stuff up again. Anyways, back on topic. All right, back on topic. So now this is the order, right? So I purchase a put below or out of the money, right? And I purchase a call out of the money. And so anything, if the, if the stock price ends up by November 1st in between those two, then I'm in trouble, right? I lose all of my premium. All of I lose all of the money that I put up to place this trade. All one thousand dollars, one hundred and thirty. If, on the other hand, um, the stock ends up below two hundred eight eighty, and far enough below two hundred eight eighty to pay up for my premium up top as well, then I get that money free and clear. All right. Then that's gonna be profit. If it drops all the way down to like 200, let's say for example, I'd be uh, very profitable, right? That'd be great. Now, this is not that unlikely to happen. I mean, they it's it's really like a volatility play. And there's no wrong. It's not wrong to play this. Every single option trade has some kind of percentage chance to hit, right? Uh, most of them expire out of the money, but if you time things right, if you think the volatility is understated, then you may want to do a strangle. Now, what is a straddle? Well, let's undo this contract. Let's go back to the cost sheet. So let's say we put we purchase that 225 um, call. And instead of going below the money now and purchasing a put all the way down below at 215 or whatever we were at. I decide for some odd reason, right, to purchase a put at the exact same price. Boom. So now, since Robin Hood is like super intelligent apparently, it recognizes what I'm trying to do and it's saying it's it's writing it out up top. It's saying I'm doing a straddle. So strangle and straddle kind of confusing because their names so their names are so um, close in pronunciation, but really they should be uh, closed because they're almost interchangeable, right? It's like the same thing, except you're not leaving any room in between the options, okay? You pick a price and, and that's it. So you would need, um, you would need uh, the price to be substantial, you know, below $214 in order for the put option to be profitable. And on the call side, you would need it to be above 230 all right now that seems a lot better than the strangle right 
So what's the catch? Well, you can see the catch right here, <laughs> right? The catch is that it's more expensive. You have to put up more money for the privilege of having a tighter um, spread there between the, the call option and the put option. All right. So you can do that. You can play volatility if you want. Um, it's a good idea if, uh, if you know what you're doing. All right. And let's click on one of these options. So let, how about the call option here? And even gives you a little bit of a measure. It gives you implied volatility here, 24.6. Okay. So that's actually a little bit higher than what Apple uh, call options run for around this level. From my experience, this was 25.6. This was 24.6. Right. Sometimes these ones about a month away, like 10 bucks off or something like that or six, seven bucks off, they run a little bit closer to 20. So I would not put that trade on. This, at the moment anyways, would imply volatility. I would rather do an iron condor, right? Which is the opposite. It takes advantage um, of the fact that if, if the stock stays around the same price level, okay? And if you wanna know how to put that on, I have a different video. I may link it, I may put a link uh, on it below in the description so um, anyway so that's how you do it if you have any questions about it like let me know and uh, I'll try to answer I haven't actually I don't do this trade very often but you can do it if I notice that something some volatility is like really understated then uh, I will do it but I have not really played around with that one thing I did do however is sell a put option spread last week for like 10 15 dollars on apple on friday just for over the weekend i mean just until friday for a couple of days and uh, it did expire worthless so which so i gained like 15 or 20 bucks or something like that which was great uh free money now and i'm combining that with the rest of the cash that i have to buy some gsw i'm sorry gsy which is the short-term treasuries park some cash there until the market it takes a hit okay um i think I've explained everything I need to, to explain. So we have the strangle and the straddle, pretty pretty identical. The only difference really is whether you do the exact same strike price or uh, you have a um, out of the money call right, and out of the money put. So anyway, that's about it. Hopefully you learned something. And if you have questions, like I said, shoot them. Um, that's where I'm at with the account almost 70,000 I'm trying to hit it pretty soon hopefully I make a video log that I'm hitting 70,000 I'm really happy with my progress right now um, and the way things are going in this project of mine so all right <laughs> enjoy <laughs> I think that's it for now probably talk to you on mm, not tomorrow maybe Thursday night something like that okay peace out that's it for now bye